Today we're talking about concussions and post-concussion syndrome. Having experienced both of these, I can attest to it being not fun at all, which is why I'm doing this video for you today. We're gonna talk about the symptoms of concussion and post-concussion syndrome, the underlying brain mechanisms that are associated with those symptoms, and how to cope through these next weeks and or months that you may be experiencing these. So here we go with concussion and post-concussion syndrome. Millions of people every year suffer from concussions and post-concussion syndrome. It is estimated somewhere between three to four million Americans alone uh, have reported such things and possibly a lot more are experiencing these but aren't aware of exactly what it is they're going through. It's very easy for concussions and post-concussion syndromes to happen due to the softness of the brain. It's actually pretty squishy, a lot like jello, <laughs> which makes it highly susceptible to injury. If it wasn't for a skull, we'd be in great, great trouble. What happens when we hit our head is that often the neurons, which are your brain cells, um, the axons on them stretch and tear. When this stretching and tearing occurs, uh, you have problems with your thinking and your memory because your brain cells aren't able to to communicate effectively with each other. What also happens is as these axons break, toxins are actually released from the axons themselves, which can cause further damage, leading to damage in the brain cells that are surrounding those ones due to the toxicity alone. The more immediate symptoms of concussion uh, can include blacking out, headaches, blurred vision, nausea, your pupils sort of going different sizes, problems with your balance, um, and then later on, you can experience problems with your mood and behavior, of course, memory and thinking. You can have get light sensitivity and uh, also anxiety and or depression and sleeping problems. The anxiety and depression can be a result of difficulty adjusting to what has happened to you, but it can also be due to the emotion center in your brain, which is at the top of the brain stem. So as, when your brain gets a whack and your neck gets a whack, that emotion center uh, does as well, which can certainly impact changes in your mood. When symptoms persist beyond a week or two and can actually occur later, like light sensitivity may occur later, uh, when these things keep occurring for months, that's clearly post-concussion syndrome. You're getting a lingering of these effects. And really, what you need to do, as much as you might not want to hear this, if you're a very active, adventurous person in particular, is you have to do nothing. <laughs> you have to lie, lie low, lay low, um, and allow your brain to rest. You definitely don't want to get a second um, whack to your head while you are recouping because there are add additive effects from that can that can make healing much more difficult and lead to more permanent or more difficult um, brain issues to resolve. Multiple ongoing hits to the head if you're in sports like soccer uh, or football in particular, multiple hits to the head can lead to these tau proteins um, coming out of the axons in your brain cells and they can they break off and they clump together and create all kinds of havoc. So you, you want to avoid multiple hits to the head. Um, we actually call that chronic traumatic encephalopathy when you experience um, these types of effects. When it comes to seeing damage that may have occurred, it's really hard to see. Uh, we don't often recommend MRIs or um, CAT scans so much anymore. We can definitely see broken blood vessels. We can even see scar tissue from tissue that is healing. But a lot of the damage is microscopic and hard to see. There are uh, tools such as DTI that might want to be used, which can look at uh, axon bundles that may be occurring. But for the most part, there isn't a lot of imaging that we can use that will really detect the type of damage that occurs in concussion and post-concussion syndrome. You may experience PTSD from the events that led to your injury, that's pretty common. You might also experience sleeping problems, which could be a direct result of the hit to your head, uh, impacting your sleep pa patterns, and or just aches and pains that you have that make it difficult to sleep and roll over and that kind of thing. So making sure you have appropriate sleep is really important to the healing process. You might need to go to your doctor to get some melatonin or maybe some anti-anxiety medication that are really gonna help you relax into this process. You really need to relax until the healing occurs. Some people find relief from light sensitivity via chiropractic work. I know that I did. It's not often recommended by neurologists, so there are different schools of thought, but I know when you're going through things like this, you don't want to just wait around and let it happen. You want to be proactive. And I know for me, chiropractic did relieve uh, my light sensitivity, so um, you can decide whether that's something you may or may not want to try yourself. 
Emotionally, it can feel like it's never gonna end. If you're the kind of person that's chomping at the bit to get on with life like me, uh, you're not a good candidate for going through post-concussion syndrome. <laughs> uh, but you, we really do need to learn to relax and just wait it out. It does get better, it will get better. Um, I've heard a lot of different stories of odd things that happen while people are going through post-concussion syndrome and the brain is a pretty tricky place um, so if you're experiencing odd things go and talk to a neurologist or talk to a psychologist and they can you know help you through it and remind you that these are just normal things to expect as your brain heals so that was it it's five minutes on concussion and post-concussion email me if you have any questions and stay tuned next week for a new topic we'll see you soon bye-bye